What's wrong? What's wrong, Ma? I got three days to live. Fine, Ma. I'll scratch the Bengay off the grocery list. <laughs> I can't believe you're so insensitive. Ma, you are not dying. I am, Dorothy. I had a dream last night, a death dream. Your father spoke to me. Spoke to you? How? Do I look like Rich Little? <laughs> Just listen. I'm sitting in the living room, and the clock strikes nine. Then the bell rings. It's your father and his fedora. He always wore a fedora on Saturday. He walks towards me, reaches out his hand, and says, Sophia, you can come now. There's room for you now. That's it? You want them to show up with Barbara Eden the College All-American football team? <laughs> it's a dream, not a Bob Hope special. <laughs> I'm dying, Dorothy. Saturday, 9 o'clock. Don't make any plans. Oh, Ma, you're being ridiculous. I know. When was the last Saturday night you had plans? <laughs> oh, thank you, darling. Those look lovely. Well, so do you. <laughs> oh, Blanche, you really got all dressed up for your brother. Well, we do come from the South. We always felt it was important to look absolutely great in front of company. Hi, girls. What time does Clayton get here? Oh, any minute now. Oh, we better put out the welcome mat. <laughs> we don't have a welcome mat. What about the one Dorothy says is at the foot of your bed? <laughs> oh, there's Clayton now. Uh, girls, remember what I said. No remarks about his marriage breaking up. He's still a little touchy. Clayton! <laughs> baby brother! Sister! Oh, my, look at you all gussied up. Prettier than a spring-blooming peach tree on a dewy April morning. Oh, well, you ought to talk all fresh, scrubbed, and rosy cheek like a country parson in a September hometown. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling they had a maid named Honeybee when they grew up? Come on in, Clayton. I want you to meet my best friends, Dorothy and Rose. Nice Dorothy, to meet you, Clayton. Rose, so nice to see you. How was your trip, Clayton? Oh, fine. It just went by in no time. Well, that usually means he met a stewardess he liked. Oh, uh, lunch, dinner, or drinks? Dinner. Oh, I'm beginning to see the family resemblance. <laughs> Honey, come on inside. I'll get you all settled down. And then I want to tell you all the wonderful things I have planned for us to do. Okay. It was so nice finally meeting you all. See you later, Clayton. Oh, isn't it nice to see a brother and sister who are such good friends? Oh, it certainly is. <laughs> oh, I always wish that I could have been closer to my brother Phil. You know, go places together, share experiences. Although I did love borrowing his clothes. Did you like wearing boys' clothes growing up? No, but fortunately, neither did my brother Phil. <laughs> Ma, why are you sitting here in the dark? Conserving electricity for those who will still be living past Saturday. <laughs> Put out your hands, Dorothy. What for? So I can say hello like Magic Johnson. So I'm going to give you some of my personal things. My bank book, some stocks. Oh, Ma, come on. Now, this is crazy. Hi, y'all. Oh, fabulous. Roy and Dale are back. <laughs> so where are you two off to tonight? Oh, that's a surprise. Wait a minute. Isn't that my silver locket in there? Uh, nice getting to know you, Gomer. We'll see you around. <laughs> What's all this about a surprise? Oh, well, I've uh, done a little matchmaking. <laughs> Blanche, not again. Yes, again. Now, you are 45 years old. You've been single almost two years. Well, both Dorothy and I know how much fun the single life is. Man, is the night Dorothy has sat here alone in this room watching me go out on dates. <laughs> Sometimes I watch her go from the kitchen window. It's easier to bay at the moon. <laughs> I just don't want you being afraid to get back on that horse and make a commitment again. There's your horse pulling up now. <laughs> Hello, Lois. Come in. Clayton, remember Lois LeMond from the museum? Of course. So nice to see you again. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, you two can get reacquainted on the way. These are your tickets for the concert in the park. It starts in 15 minutes, so you better hurry up now. Bye. Have a good time. Bye. Good night. I was never any good at blind dating. I always felt so... Awkward. 
Dorothy, I have a surefire icebreaker I can teach you right now. Oh, once you learn this, any man is putty in your hand. Oh, Blanche, come on, that is ridiculous. I mean, I'm certainly not going to waste my time listening to this adolescent nonsense. Did you say putty? <laughs> <laughs> Sit back. Now, just play like we're at the movies. Okay, first I start to yawn a little. Oh, then I put my hands up over my head like Oh, that. Blanche, I know that. When you end up with your arm around me. Yeah, but that's just the first part. Did you know that if you blow right on the tip of a man's earlobe, it can drive him absolutely crazy? I'll show you. right for me and she's way off i'll bet i could sit here for a minute and tell you what your type is i'm good at this gosh i'm stuck yeah being stuck no i'm stuck on the gum somebody left on this bed <laughs> okay now you just give me your honest reactions when people go by that's how i'll tell you here comes one go no too thin here comes one You sure? Next. <laughs> Clayton. Clayton, you're not playing fair. That's a man. <laughs> That's a man and you're a man. <laughs> you're both men. <laughs> said Aga Larson's nephew was because he wore pastry clogs and gave out puff pastry on Halloween. I've been called a lot of things in my time, but that's a first for that one. Yeah, I'm gay, Rose. But Blanche told us you were married. I was. After a while, I just couldn't deny the truth to myself. Seems silly still denying it to my big sister. Doesn't it? What, have you tried telling her? Every time I see her, and I always chicken out. I know, Blanche. I mean, she'd be upset, but not for long. And just think how it would help you two in the long run. But how do I keep from chickening out? By telling her. Tonight, while you've still got your dander up. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I mean, I've got to tell her tonight. But it's not going to be easy. I, mean, I still haven't told Blanche I was the one who stole the Montgomery Cliff poster off her wall when she left for college. <laughs> for Clayton. I want to make sure he had a good time tonight. My brother and I are very close. That's sweet, Marge. Evening, ladies. Well, Clayton Hollins, well, it's about time. You and your date must have really hit it off. Hey, Rose, what are you doing with Clayton? We ran into each other in the park. Well, what happened to Lois? Oh, she went home. We weren't really suited, Blanche. Not suited? <laughs> Sometimes I do not understand you. Time after time, I fix you up with attractive, eligible women, and nothing happens. It's time you found yourself a woman. Now, what is the matter with you? Tell her, Clayton. I will, Rose. Tell me what? Well, I ran into Rose in the park, and, uh... 
Ken. And we had a long talk, Ken. Uh, and? And we slept together tonight. <laughs> Preparing for a burial? Forget it. Oh, Ma, you finally came to your senses. Yes. I decided to be cremated instead. Oh. Oh. It's a great idea. My ashes can be divided among you, your brother Phil, and your sister Gloria. <laughs> nah, forget Gloria. I don't want to spread myself too thin. <laughs> Hi, girls. I need to talk. Oh, honey, what is it? All day long, Blanche has been giving me looks. I think she's really mad. Look, Rose, what happened between you and Clayton last night is your business, not Blanche's. But that's just the point, Dorothy. Nothing happened between Clayton and me. Nothing physical, anyway. Why did Clayton say the two of you slept together if you have? Because he's trying to hide something about himself from Blanche. I don't even feel right saying it out loud. Maybe if I just whispered it. <laughs> Clayton is a hobo? I could smoke it out of him in three or four quick questions. Hello, ladies. Perfect timing. Come uh, So, Clayton, uh, what do you think of this Miami weather so far? Oh, it's lovely. I see. <laughs> Have you ever been to Europe? No, but it's always been a dream of mine. Interesting. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? Two. Fine. You can go back to the living room now. The man's as gay as a picnic basket. Oh, that, that is, that is incredible. How did you know? I heard him singing in the shower. He's the only man I ever knew who knows all the words to send in the clowns. <laughs> I owe you an apology. You sure do. I shouldn't have got you mixed up in all this. It's just so hard to tell Blanche the truth. Clayton, you're selling your sister short. Now, at times, Blanche can be very understanding and compassionate and forgiving. Get away from my baby brother, you cradle-snatching, empty-headed, two-faced <laughs> dummy. <laughs> and then at other times, she can be a real bitch. <laughs> There's something you should not out, Clayton. This doesn't concern you. Well, it most certainly does concern him. Why? Because he was seduced by a bubblehead whose hair looks like it was colorized by Ted Turner. <laughs> now, just a minute. But out, Clayton. This doesn't concern you. You're really going to regret this when you have to come begging on hands and knees for forgiveness. Oh, then I shall never regret it because I never intend to apologize. We'll see about that. I wish you hadn't done that, oh, Blanche. Hush up. It was for your own good. There's something you just don't understand. Oh, I understand perfectly. I pushed you into meeting all those women. That's why this happened. But it is over. 
Rose will be just fine. Blanche is not oh, a simple... Oh, Clayton, honey, leave it alone. Blanche, listen. <sighs> nothing happened between me and Rose. Just like nothing ever happens between me and any of the women you set me up with. There's a reason. What are you saying, Clayton? I'm saying I'm gay, Blanche. Oh, <laughs> Clayton, please be serious. You're just saying that so I won't set you up with any more women. No, Blanche. Well, then you're saying it because you're trying to get back at me for something. Blanche. Clay, I know you too well for this. After all, I know it can't be true. You're my brother. It's true, Blanche. Maybe I ought to just leave you alone for a while. Clayton Hollinsworth, you look me in the face and tell me you really are what you just said you are. I think you heard me the first time, Blanche. Hey, Harry. Flip on the game, will you? Not another game. Come on, Tina, let's go. I'll see you back at the house. How'd you find me here? Well, I knew that you and Rose were here last night. May I join you? Of course. <laughs> you know that popcorn reminds me of Rex's driving out of the lake. <laughs> you remember the night my date and I parked right next to you and your date? Pretty soon it got to be a contest who could fog up whose car the fastest. <laughs> I think you won. Uh, you weren't doing too badly considering you were in a convertible. <laughs> you know, Clay, I've been thinking a lot about what you told me today, and I've also been thinking a lot about that boy out at Rex's drive-in, and honey, the two pictures don't go together. There's just something wrong with one of them. But it's not the one you're hoping, Blanche. It was the heater fogging up my car windows that night. So, what can I bring you, sweetheart? Don't you dare talk to him like that. Now, you get out of here. Blanche, I think he was talking to you. Oh. oh. I'm having a little trouble putting this all together. Please, I, I just feel like I don't know you anymore. I'm the same person. I always was. No, you're not. You used to be just like me. Why? Great looking? Yes. Charming? Yes. Irresistible to men? <laughs> oh my God, Clayton, you are me. <laughs> but I still just can't. Blanche, I spent a long time lying to myself. It felt a lot better when I stopped. It feels better being honest with you, too. And I'd hate to think that this is going to keep us from being friends. Well, honey, of course it isn't. Oh, no, I'll get used to this. I will. Well, look at me already. I'm practically comfortable seeing you here in a gay bar. Well, if this isn't a gay bar. Clay, now, we did say we were going to be honest with each other. All right, now, I can do my part. You just watch this. You all over at the bar... I just want to say that I would be very proud to have any one of you date my brother. I'd rather date you, lady. Sweet Jesus, I've just done the impossible. I converted you. We're going out to celebrate Clayton's last night in town. Oh, terrific. Let's go to Jose's. We always go there to celebrate. The food is great. Yeah, and they make all the waiters wear these really skin-tight bullfighters pants. Really? <laughs> Let's go to Emilio's. T-minus <laughs> ten seconds.
Oh, Mom, will you give it up? You are not dying. There is not going to be a doorbell. There is not going to be a pop. There is not going to be a ring. There is not going to be anything. 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 Listen, Rose, do me a favor. Look out the peephole and see who's at the door. Sure, Dorothy. Gee, it's kind of hard to tell. All I can see is a fedora. Oh, my God. <laughs> who's that at the door? It's me, Blanche. <laughs> the other side. Move, Rose. Ah, uh, don't. I have to, Dorothy. Mom. Mildred, what are you doing here? When do I always wear my lucky bowling hat? We're bowling tonight? Didn't you get my message the other night? No one answered the door. I figured you were napping, so I yelled outside your window. We had room. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Were your exact words, Sophia, you can come now? We have room now? And were you wearing that hat at the time? Yes. First of all, Dorothy, I'm going bold. Well, let's go to dinner, ladies. Have fun. Rose, honey, there's something I have to say to you. It's just two little words, but they are the hottest two little words in all the whole world for me to say. Not tonight. <laughs> no. If you've come here to apologize, I accept. Just like that? Yes. I mean, for me, just the fact that you thought of those words is plenty, considering what a selfish, conceited person you are. <laughs> But I had a whole speech planned, Rose, uh, about how nice you were to my brother and, and, and how proud I am to have such a sweet person as my friend. Now I can't say it. Well, sure you can. No, I can't. You just ruined it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I forgive you, Rose. <laughs> on getting ditched, I'll ask an expert, Dorothy, did I get ditched? <laughs> yes, Blanche, but don't feel bad. Look what it's done for Sonny Bono. <laughs> And it's finally happened. I cannot believe it. I have lost it, haven't I? In more back seats than any woman I know. <laughs> Ma, you're not feeling any better, are you? I'm fine, thank you. But you look terrible. Gee, I guess I won't be making it the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue this year like the rest of you. <laughs> Sophia, Dorothy's just concerned about your health. We all are. Ma, you have been walking around sick for over a week. You would feel a lot better if you would just obey the doctor's orders. Now look, either you're going to follow his orders or I'm going to call him and tell on you. Ooh, what is he going to do, come over and spank me? <laughs> if he does, tell him to come by my room. <laughs> Who can that be at this hour? Maybe it's Blanche's date. Oh, he better not show up here. I'll get him. Hi, everyone. It's me, Stan. Look, I know it's late, but I had to come by. 
I have awesome news. Dating someone over 12? Ma, <laughs> no, that's not nice. Is that it, Stanley? No. Congratulate me, everyone. I'm getting hitched. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, congratulations, Stan. Oh, yeah. Tell us all about it. <laughs> Her name is Catherine. We met at the post office. We discovered we had a lot in common. Oh, is she bald too? <laughs> for the first few months, I found myself sending her flowers, candy, friendship notes for no special reason. Oh, that's lovely, Stan. I'm impressed. Yeah, I read in a book by some dame shrink that chicks really eat that stuff up. <laughs> anyway, Catherine and I fell in love and... On the spur of the moment, we decided to get married. The wedding is a week from tonight, and you're all invited. <laughs> I talked to the kids. They said they're going to try and fly in. Well, I got to go now. I'm on my way to surprise Catherine with this. Now, what do you think? I think Lisa Bonet spent more on the ring in her nose. <laughs> Don't listen to her, Stanley. It's beautiful. I'm sure Catherine will love it. You mean it? Not a word. <laughs> Babe, it's a real diamond. What's wrong with it? I think the more appropriate question is, where is it? Okay, the diamond's not very big. Okay, it's not a real diamond. It's a thought that counts. Okay, I didn't put much thought into it. It was cheap. I'm cheap. What can I tell you? Stanley, honey, why don't you let me help you pick out something else for Kat? I'll help, too. I mean, hey, well, there's nothing wrong with my taste. You've seen that ring that I picked out for Dorothy. Actually, he was going for a bracelet, but the mechanical claw grabbed the ring. <laughs> okay, girls, I guess I do need some help. I'll call tomorrow and we'll set up a time to go shopping. I really have to run now. I'm fixing a terrific late-night supper for Catherine. Oh, really? In 38 years of marriage, you never once cooked a terrific meal for us. Neither did you. <laughs> We're supposed to be taking it easy. When I feel bad, I have to take my mind off it. There's only one thing that does that for me. Cooking a big meal. No, making love in a closet. <laughs> hey, you do what you can. Hi, we're back. Huh. We helped Stan pick out a ring for Catherine. I feel terrible. I think we spent too much money. Oh, stop worrying about the money. You were talking about love. I still think we spent too much. You didn't spend it. The yacht spent it. <laughs> That's what makes him a yutz. <laughs> Sophia's dry. Don't worry about it. Ma, <coughs> Ma, uh, uh, I think you better sit down. Come on, over here. Here you go. <coughs> Dorothy, should I get Sophia a glass of water? No, Rose, you should sit here and watch her hack herself to death. <coughs> Are you sure? Get the water! <coughs> I am going to call the doctor. I can't breathe. Forget the Dr. Blanche. Call the paramedics. What is taking them so long? It's been over an hour. I'm sure they're doing the best they can. The cafeteria was closed. This is all I could find. Thanks. Any word on Sophie? None. No, I hate waiting. I hate hospitals. I hate when the people put each other down on love connection. <laughs> Dorothy, I got here as fast as I could. Stan, how'd you know where to find her? Well, I had second thoughts about the price of the ring the girls made me buy, so I came by the house. The neighbors told me what happened. I'm so happy you're cheap. <laughs> so how's Sophia doing? We still don't know. Oh, Stan, I'm scared. This is the Bornack? Oh, Dr. Seymour. Is my mother going to be all right? Her condition is quite serious. But you said it was just a simple virus. It's advanced to pneumonia. Normally I wouldn't be this concerned, but her resistance is very low. That coupled with her age makes these next few hours extremely critical. But are you saying that my mother could die? We're doing everything possible. All we can do right now is wait and see how she responds to treatment. Can I see her? Not until she's out of intensive care. The best thing you can do now is go home and get some rest. I'll call if there's any change. Come on, Dorothy, I'll take you home. No, not leaving. Then we'll all stay. No, you go. Oh, no, we're not going anywhere. I would rather be alone, please. Are you sure, babe? Would it be stupid to ask for a group hug before oh, we leave? Of course not, honey. <laughs> Hands 
above the waist. Um, Hi, babe. I hope you're hungry. I could have sent you home. I was in the neighborhood. At one o'clock in the morning? All right, I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about Sophia. How is she? No one has said a word to me in hours. What? That's ridiculous. I'm going to find somebody. Right now. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I want some information, and I want it now. The drone is down the hall. Yeah. <laughs> it's about a patient, Sophia Petrillo. She's in intensive care. The cafeteria's close. <laughs> Get a doctor in here. Someone will be with you in just a moment. <laughs> you really care about Ma, don't you, Sam? <laughs> hey, if someone puts you down for 40 years, I guess you have a special bond. I can't imagine life without her telling me what a yutz I am, what a lousy husband I was, how my toupee looks like a monkey's behind. <laughs> God, I love that woman. I do. Uh, what are we going to do if she doesn't make it? She's going to be fine. Come on, let's eat. I brought you your favorite. Oh, you're such a sweet heart, Chinese. No, Italian. <clears throat> Look, there's been no change on the Petrillo case. We are very busy. We'll call when we can. Yeah, listen, buddy. Sophia may be just another case to you, but we happen to love her, so we want to know how she is regardless. So from now on, I want to be informed every hour on the hour. Do you understand me? I'm sorry, sir. I'll see that you're kept informed. You are magnificent. I have my moments. <laughs> what do you want? Lasagna or cannelloni? Oh, Ma makes great lasagna. I can never get mine to taste as good. She says it's because I don't sing to my marinara sauce. That's her secret. She sings opera to her sauce. Except, of course, during the holiday season when she sings Nat King Cole. I love your lasagna. Oh, you're just saying that to make me feel better. Is it working? Like a charm. Excuse me, Mrs. Zabornak. Oh, my mother? She's going to be fine. You can go up and see her right away. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, she's, she's going to be all right. Stanley, come on, let's go see her. No, 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 you go. You two should be alone. I'll stay here and clean up. I'll stop by later. Stan, thank you for standing by me. I don't know how I could have done it without you. Hey. What are ex-husbands for? women. Hello, Sophia. Hi, Sophia. We just stopped by on our way to work to check on you. How you feeling? She's going to be just fine. Only this time, she's going to follow the doctor's orders. What about you, Dorothy? You must be exhausted being here by yourself no, all night. I wasn't alone. Stan came by and stayed with me. Brought me food. Held me. Showed me that special part of himself. Right there in the waiting room? <laughs> Not that part, Rose. Anyway, spending time with Stan made me see something that I hadn't realized. He dyes the hair in his ears? I noticed that months ago. Besides that, 
I'm still in love with the man, and I can't let him marry someone else. Is it me, or is the room suddenly getting darker? <laughs> and yet so sensitive and so vulnerable. I know I couldn't have gotten through it without him. Listen, Dorothy, you thought Sophia might be dying. You were the one who was sensitive and vulnerable. Blanche is right. At the counseling center, I see cases like this all the time. When people lose loved ones, they sometimes do things they'd never normally do. Take Mrs. Pulaski. When her mother died, she divorced her husband, lost 30 pounds, dyed her hair, and ran off to Paris with an artist 10 years her junior. I just got a postcard last week. Yeah, and now she's miserable and bony and sick of eating snails, right? <laughs> no, they bought a beautiful home in Cannes. Rose! <laughs> Granted, not a great example. Thank you for proving my case, Rose. Ma getting sick was probably a good thing after all, because it made me see how great Stan is. All right. What if this isn't what Stanley wants? Excellent point. What about that, Dorothy? If you had been there that night, you'd know that he feels exactly the same way about me. Then how come he hasn't called off his wedding and told you he loves you? Because he is not sure how I feel. Oh, he oh. wants me to make the first move. Oh, gee, I hadn't counted on this. She makes good sense. Rose! I want to thank you for helping me think this through. You know, up until now, I honestly had a few doubts, but after talking to you, I, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Tomorrow, before the wedding, I'm going to tell Stan I love him. Well, way to go, Rose. You talked her into doing exactly the opposite of what we wanted her to do. I guess that's why they took me off the suicide hotline at work. <laughs>
along? Well, of course. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> He's right. Why wouldn't it be? Dorothy, come on. Let's go powder our noses before the ceremony. Stan, I have to get something off my chest. I agree. <laughs> there, that's much better. <laughs> Okay, let's go. I am not going anywhere. Will you girls, excuse me. My girdle is killing me. He's wearing a girdle? A padded shoulders. And knowing him, a sock in his crotch. <laughs> All right, now what are you two doing here anyway? We have come to stop you from making a fool of yourself. Why would Dorothy make a fool of herself? Well, Stanley, you know how she gets at weddings, all emotional. Her nose starts running, then her mascara starts running. Pretty soon everything's running all together. Nobody can enjoy their cake. <laughs> Stan, I have to tell you something. Dorothy, somebody's at the door. I'll get it. No, you won't. Let Dorothy get it. But I'm closer. Oh, my God. Oh, it must be that old plow injury. Dorothy, don't think you got it. someone to talk to. Am I right? That's right. Then take a quart and call a shrink. This ain't cheers. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, just a little nervous. I'm supposed to get married in exactly 20 minutes right here in this hotel. Well, but what are you doing here? Cold feet? Yeah, but not about him. See, he's got this ex-wife. You better be careful what you say. I happen to be an ex-wife. <laughs> Not like his, I'm sure. No one's like her. She's superwoman. She was the perfect wife. Cooked, cleaned, had two kids, got an education, has never looked better, and now she has a career. That wasn't a marriage. That's a commercial for a mini pad. <laughs> and she's coming to our wedding. I'm, they're, they're still friends. Listen to me, I'm, I'm so intimidated by a woman I've never even met. It's understandable. I mean, she sounds pretty terrific. <laughs> I bet she's gorgeous, too. No, the daughter had a nose job and she had her mother's nose. Evidently, it was a honker. <laughs> are, you, are you all right? Fine. You were saying? I don't know what I'm saying. All I know is I've waited all my life to find someone like Stan. That's my fiance. I know. You do? I, I know. I can feel. I can feel. <laughs> no, you don't. See, I've never been married before, except to my career. I guess that's why I feel so insecure about being a wife. I want to be a good wife. You're really crazy about the guy. Head over heels in love. I feel like a teenager. He's smart, he's funny, and the best lover I've ever had. You haven't slept around much, have you? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Um, nothing. I'm popcorn. Oh, no, no, thanks. So, um, you think he might still be in love with his ex-wife? Well, they're still good friends. I mean, he talks about her all the time. Dorothy this, Dorothy that. What if she decides she wants him back? Oh, if she's as great as you say she is, and no doubt she is, well, possibly in a weak moment she might think she wants him back, but then maybe she'd think of the two of you together and what a nice person you seem to be, how he loves you and how much you love him, and I think she'd realize that her time with him was over and 
She let go graciously and wish him well. In fact, I think that's exactly what she'd do. No, she wouldn't. Yes, she would. No, yes, she wouldn't. Yes, she would. How can you be so sure? I'm a Leo. We're all very sure of ourselves. <laughs> Looks like I've got a wedding to go to. I'm going to a wedding myself. Do you mind if I walk with you? Not at all. You know, you're a very wise person. What did you say your name was? I didn't. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed talking with you. I hope we meet again soon. Believe me. We will. <laughs>